Hey everybody, welcome back to the Build Show Network. Steve Basic, architect here, and uh, I'm just gonna jump out and let you appreciate the view from our Hilltop Arrow project. You know, we're on the order of a 14 foot slider here in this wall. We have a, uh, just a couple feet on each side. Now, architecturally, everybody wants to fill up the walls with glass, but the reality is, is that we need a little bit of wall to resist things like earthquake and wind load and shear load and all these things. We need to be able to have a stiff building with glass and we can't rely on the window unit to provide any of that resistance. It has to be taken up inside the wall. So, project, the question was, how big does this door come? Because the wider we make this door, the harder it is to structurally resolve this wall due to the shear values. And so what you can see here is we have this corrugated metal in here. And what that is is basically a Simpson strong wall. So it gets bolt anchored down at the bottom. It gets bolt anchored up at the top. You see there's one on each side. And basically they provide the bookends and they keep the wall from wanting to do this in the wind or in the case of an earthquake here, basically racking. So they provide that moment connection or that stiffness to keep these two corners upright so that we can put this large window, or in this case, sliding glass door in that opening and appreciate that view without worrying about our house getting blown over. So let's jump back to the studio. We'll pull out some drawings and we'll talk about this a little bit more in depth. I'll see you back there. Hey everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, nice little clip of video out at the Hilltop Arrow Project where we uh, talked about a big wall with a big window and little itty bitty sidewalls. But uh, we're going to let uh, Big Red go rogue this week. So we don't have any backdrop of details. We just have blank white paper and a red marker. So uh, let's see what he's got up his sleeve. And... Uh, Let's talk about shear walls and lateral loads. We got big red, and like I promised you, we got a blank piece of paper today. So, let's talk a little bit about lateral loads, shear walls, all that good stuff. What it is, this is basics 101. You like that, huh? Basics 101. So, let's say we had a wall. In that wall, we had a bunch of zip panels nailed up. They're all nailed, right? And that wall is connected to a foundation wall. And you have the ground here. All right. All right. So, lateral load is nothing more than a load that's being imposed on the building laterally, right? As opposed to a gravity load, which is one of the ones that were very easily solved for, right? Building applies a certain load gravity. We provide a resisting force at the foundation. The building stands up. But what happens when the building gets that load laterally? Well, the building wants to deform, right? or it wants to deform this way, depending on which way the load is laterally being imposed. Now, down here, we have the ground. So when this pushes, the ground is pushing back here. And when this pushes, the ground is pushing back here. But the top of the wall isn't, right? So how do we get stiffness in that wall or a resisting force to that lateral load? Well, nailing up these panels makes them a structural shear panel and those in composite action of all those panels then fight back on those lateral loads and the building stands up. Well, that's real easy on a garage wall. Don't have any windows, any of that. But the minute I start poking holes in here, then my shear panel starts to dwindle, right? 
So put these windows in and you can see my shear panel is significantly less. So at some point, there's not enough resistance developed for equalizing that lateral force that's being imposed on the building. So we have to develop other means by doing it. Now, three windows, that's probably not going to challenge it. But out on the house, you saw when we have an 18-foot wall and 14 foot of it is door, then we really only have a small area to develop that resistance. Now, you can develop resistance in a number of ways. One, right, and we'll use our own bodies as an example. So I'm going to draw the quick stick person, right? Quick stick person. The wind blows. Well, you can lean into the wind, right? And that'll keep you because then the wind has to provide an overturning force to actually push you over. So it's kind of like pre-cambering a beam. So you initially do that. But the problem with that is, is if the wind blows this way, then I have to immediately go that way. Well, our buildings don't have the ability to lean into the wind. They're pretty much Let's call it Static Joe. So, what's another way we can resist? Well, we could take Static Joe and we can increase what's called our aspect ratio by spreading our legs apart. Right? So, if I increase this distance and the wind blows, then that also helps. Right? That's kind of like setting up this distance here. X. So if I build enough of a shear wall, then I get enough resistance to provide that overturning. And that's pretty easy aspect ratio. And usually it's something like this is X and, you know, this is probably something like 2 to 3X. And that can perform fairly well in, you know, most of your average winds. Hurricane winds, let's, we're not, we're not talking about extremes here. Um, although we need to design for, for those in certain locations. But my point is, is this thing called aspect ratio, that if I spread the base, then it becomes harder to turn something over. The last way that we can help Joe out here is we can provide a connection, right? So just imagine for a second, Joe buys golf shoes that has 18 inch spikes and he buries them in the ground. Well, that aspect ratio can now become half X because he has a stronger footing there or a stronger connection to the ground and which provides resistance. So when the wind blows, Joe can equalize that force in an opposite direction and remain standing, right? So those are the, the three simple ways using Joe as the example, but Joe isn't a building. And when it comes to buildings, while a lot of these concepts apply, we have to develop solutions, right? So again, let's draw that wall. And if we do say two four foot panels, and these panels are on center somewhere in like, say, the 24 foot range, plus or minus, then that wall has a pretty decent amount of resistance. So, but that leaves us with 16 feet in here to develop. Well, as you can see in the wall that we did at the Hilltop Arrow, we even pushed those limits a little bit more. So, you know, as you start reducing this, that aspect ratio starts to go from X to 2X to, you know, one third X to 2X. And it starts creating this overturning moment where this wall just simply wants to bend or deform because it doesn't have the resistance for that applied lateral load there. So how do we 
um, saw for it in a building. Well, just like our buddy Joe, we have that aspect ratio where, you know, we can start out with a four foot panel on each side. If that doesn't work and we want to go smaller, then we can take that panel on the side and we can do some funny things to it, like do double jacks, double plates, double jacks, and, uh, you know, introduce some additional framing and get more nailing here. But that only goes so far because what's happening, you know, say down here is you have a bottom plate and then I attach a panel to it and I have, you know, three inch nailing pattern there and see six inches up the wall. But if I come in there and say, well, if three inches is good, inch and a half has got to be better, right? No, it isn't because the problem is, is the more nails I put in here, the weaker I make that connection and the more this just wants to open up like a zipper when this wall panel wants to deform. Um, so that works a little bit that we can introduce some additional framing members, double the plate, add a few nails, but you can't really get in there and say, oh, we're just going to put 30 nails instead of 20 nails, because at some point you start to deteriorate the amount of strength that the panel can transfer because there's so many holes in it. So you can't do that. <clears throat> the other way to do this is that in this connection here with the opening, we can put a beam across here and we can take it all the way to the end and we can do a three inch grid nailing here. And that's how we solve for garage portals a lot, right? And with the extra framing in here, we get somewhat of a stronger panel, but we can drag that load across that beam. Because what we're really trying to do is we want to keep that connection right here at 90 degrees, right? We don't want it to deform. We don't want that to happen, that to happen, or that to happen, right? We want that to stay at 90 degrees. So at some point when this panel starts getting down in the, the two foot range, then this is starting to not work. And if you remember on the house out at the hilltop arrow, there we had an 18 foot wall and we had two foot legs on each side, and the header in there, with a 14 foot door, window, slider. Um, but that left us very little space on the side. And like I said, what we're trying to do is keep this at 90 degrees. Now, one solution, and you've probably seen it a lot, is you just come in here and you put in a steel column and you put a steel beam in and you weld that connection and it's called a moment connection. And the reason it's called a moment connection is because it resists any movement or any rotation and so it stays that true 90 degrees. But before you have to resolve to the steel, there's Simpson Strong Tie provides this panel that you can put in the wall here and um, it's a what's it called steel strong wall I believe and that's by Simpson strong tie and what that panel does is it gets a very serious bolted connection here and a very serious bolted connection here. Now, if you remember earlier with Joe, we talked about having 18 inch golf shoe spikes to keep them from falling over in the wind. Well, conceptually, when we bolt that connection nice and stiff, well, it keeps this panel from overturning, right? So it holds it here. The fact that it's a corrugated, and when I say corrugated, it's actually made you know, like this. 
so that when you push laterally, those corrugations, it's not a piece like this, that when this gets pushed, this just wants to buckle. It doesn't buckle because it's kind of, let's say, pre-buckled. And because of that deformation or pre-deformation, it adds a significant amount of strength to that panel so that we have a strong connection here. We have resistance to overturning, so this isn't going to want to turn when the wind blows on this. And then we have a nice strong connection there to the header and plate. That keeps this angle here a true 90 degrees. And then we put in the right sized header. We install our 14 foot door. And now when the wind blows on either side of that wall, the wall can resist that load for that location. Now, how do you calculate that load? It depends on where you are. Um, and meaning where you are, meaning am I on the beach? Or am I snuggled in the woods somewhere? Obviously, the exposure of the woods, you're probably not going to see a 100 mile an hour wind. But if I'm putting this on the top of a hill, like it is, or if I'm worse yet, putting it on the coast where we're getting winds off the coast of North Carolina or Florida in a hurricane, then this load can be very, very significant, All right? And so I need a significant response to that load. So lateral loads are nothing more than something trying to push on the building and deform it, mostly wind and earthquake loads. And the fact that the bottom of the building is usually secured to some type of foundation connection this upper wall wants to deform. And lateral structural design is to provide an adequate response so we don't get that deformation. So that's lateral load basics 101. All right, so big red proved worthy. Didn't need a backdrop. Just needs a blank piece of paper and a little bit of time. Anyways. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Um, you know, been doing this for well over a year. Got lots of videos there. Go check them out. Science says watch them seven times. Um, one of the things, as we're closing in on the end of the year here, um, tomorrow being Christmas Eve, I want to wish you all, uh, faithful followers here, uh, a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season, wherever you are, wherever you're sharing it with. Be safe. Enjoy. Um, gather everybody around the TV and uh, throw up some videos on the Build Show Network. I mean, there is nothing better to do on Christmas Eve than throw up a few building videos and talk about shear walls or water management. I mean, come on, it doesn't doesn't get much better than that. So hit it. Um, next week we'll close out the year, but uh, but really a very sincere thank you to all of you. Appreciate it. Appreciate the support. Um, and uh, we got a lot of great things coming. So until next time, long live our buildings.